React Managing Components There are many different approaches to managing components. I'm going to cover one very common approach and one I generally expect to see within code that uses components within React. So using the source directory, again we have a source directory within a React project, we create a new directory called components. And this helps us organize our components into their own folders, which we'll see right here. So any additional components added to the project will be within their own folder, which will be within components, which will be within source. This adds an extra layer of directories to navigate, but really helps organize this. And this is based on the principle, again, as part of React, that components take care of themselves. So if a component has CSS or image assets, they'll be within the folder for its own name. And we'll talk about that more in future videos. So right now that we're concerned with managing components. So let's an example. I have an example right here of files within a project using a components directory and then a file within that components directory used with an app.js. Now files are included, that is use the import keyword using their relative paths. So this gets back to the dot slash. So we then build the relative path from the current file to the file we want to import. So in this case, if we were in app.js and a file was in components, that extra directory, it would be dot slash for the current directory, components to move into the components folder, slash, and then the file we want. Again, remembering that we import using relative paths. So what if one file was in the same directory as another? So if we're importing components across the same directory, it works the same way. Again, using relative paths, so the dot slash. So in this case, if we wanted to import the file another, which was in the same directory that we were currently working in, in another file, we would say dot slash and then the name of that file. So let's look at an example of this. I'm gonna move over to Visual Studio Code and we see a previous example using a class component called app. I want to add more components to this. So I'm going to start by selecting source, the SRC right here, which will temporarily close it. And then while it's selected, I want to create a new directory over here, new folder, and call this components. So I want to then create a new component in the components directory. Again, this seems like a lot of extra folders, but it will really help organize components, again, thinking that they take care of themselves. So I want to create a new component called example. So with components selected, I'm going to create another new folder. Over here, new folder. In this case, I'm gonna call it example. This will be the name of the new component. So now I have components and example. With example selected, notice it's underlined over here. I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call this index.js. So over here it has the path. Our project is called example. We're in its source folder, which is pointed to components, which is pointing to example. And now we're in its index.js. Now you may be asking, why am I using index.js? Well, Node, and since React is built on Node, React will look for, by default, an index.js file within a folder, which means all we would have to do is point at the folder we want, and it would assume we mean index.js and would automatically use that file. So what if I put a pretty simple, right, arrow function here, and I want to, of course, export default example. Well, it would seem as if we could just do this right here, right? And I could say return hi, right? And this would seem enough. We are exporting out an object, so everything would seem to be okay. Well, there's a thing we need to remember. And this is sort of an implied rule that isn't discussed as much. Anytime we create a component, this is my every time voice, every time we create a new component, 
we have to import React. Now that may seem very strange, but because all of the files are pre-processed, again, that two layers of processing from XML into JavaScript and then parsing the JavaScript, right? Two layers of processing. That first layer of processing, the one that converts the XML into JavaScript, it looks for something special. It looks for React, which tells it, hey, this is React code. So anytime we create a component, so if this is going to be a component, it may be other code, but if it's going to be component, and it is in this case because it's in the components directory, we must always import React from React. So again, it may seem strange because we're not using React anywhere here in this file, but that React, that import React, cues the processor, the preprocessor. So again, that first level of processing from XML into JavaScript tells it, hey, this is going to be a component somewhere else. And so it knows then if it's going to be a component, it will also contain JSX. So again, that conversion, right? That XML into JavaScript conversion, that first layer of conversion. So that first layer of processing, it needs React inside of it. So anytime we create a new component, let's just get into the habit of always import React from React. It will always be the first line or the code will not work. So, okay, we have right here an object because it is a variable whose value is an arrow function and an arrow function is a function and a function is an object. So everything's totally cool. In fact, if we're ever not sure, look, when I put the cursor over this, it says, hey, this is an example, which is equal to a JSX element. And so that helps us, and of course, helps Visual Studio Code keep track of what we're doing. So we have a new component called example, which is in its own folder called example, which is in a folder called components. So remember, when I wanted to create a new component, I created a new components folder. Inside of that, created a new folder for that component. And then inside of that, created a new file, index.js. So, okay, I've gone through all of this work. I want to use this new component I've just created over here in app.js. So to do that, remember that importing works on relative paths. So right now we're going to ignore lines two and three. We're going to come back to that in a later video. I want to import this new file. So import, obviously, keyword. What are we importing? Well, example, where, so from, and then we use single quotations. Now, dot slash for a relative path. And look, Visual Studio is going to help us. It says, okay, from this relative path, I think you mean either app.test, index, service worker, or setup tests, or the folder components. So we can press enter, slash, oh, and it says, hey, I've scanned components, and there's only one thing in there, which is example, enter. I'm going to stop right here and put a semicolon. So remember, this is what I talked about by default. By default, it assumes you mean index.js, and so we can just say, hey, import example from components slash example, it will default to index.js. Now notice something else. This is slightly shaded and it says, hey, there's an error here. It says example, well, it's a warning. It says example is declared, but its value is never used. So it says, okay, I understand this is example. In fact, notice when I put the cursor over it, it says, hey, this is a JSX element and we imported example from it, right? And completely understands what we're talking about but it's telling us we're never using it. So let's use the element form of example, which will be in the future converted from its XML, from its JSX form into JavaScript. So what this means is down here, I'm gonna put right like that. And notice it still follows the rules of JSX. As a reminder of those rules, one root element, which of course we have right here, and we have a single division as the root. And in fact, we also did it here. There is only one element, so it is the root, one root element. Everything closes, 
and all of my HTML here is closes, including the code I just wrote, which self closes. So that's the second rule. And the third rule is that only expressions, JavaScript expression, or the third rule is only JavaScript expressions are allowed. So we have an example of that, but I don't really want to get into it. But so far we are abiding by all of the rules. And if we weren't, Visual Studio would tell us. So, okay. I have example. Now notice I haven't saved this file yet. If we're ever unsure, have I saved this file or not? Notice this full circle over here, full circle up here, and of course over here, open editors want unsaved. So I didn't mention this down here, but I previously ran the command npm start. In fact, notice it says compile it successfully and it says on my network and gives me an address. So if I pull up Firefox, which I have is running in, we see it right here as it currently looks. So let's move back over to Visual Studio Code. And now I'm going to save this file. And notice it says compile it successfully. So remember, when we run npm start or npm run start, either one will work, it creates a development server that will do live reloading. So I'm currently using that option here to live reload my code and show me the changes as they happen. So I added example as an element here. But remember, this is getting processed twice. It's getting process one to convert the JSX, the XML, into JavaScript, and then getting processed a second time to actually handle the JavaScript itself. So let's move back over to here. Where is it? Oh, it's down here. Hi, right? It added the content of example. So example was a component, which was a functional component, which returned a paragraph tag with the content of hi, which I've included right here. And you say, oh, well, how come it didn't include the color right here? Well, because it didn't apply to that, I included it outside of all of this right here at the very end, but still inside the one root element rule of JSX. So we can see then, as I move back to Visual Studio Code and the subject of this video, that we can create new components through first creating a components directory, the name of the component we want to create, and then inside of that, create an index.js file. Inside of the index.js, we can have the name of the component we are creating. And right here, I'm going to pause and say it is a good general rule. It's not a, a good recommendation. It's not a rule. It is a good recommendation to match the name within the file. So this is index.js. So the name within this is example, which matches the name of the directory example. You don't have to do this but it is highly recommended. And the reason why is because over here, when we import it, it will match. So notice it says example, we're importing example and we're exporting from this other file example. So those match and it's highly recommended to do that. So the other thing we learned is that paths are relative. So we're in app.js, the dot slash into components, the slash into example. And of course, by default, it will import any index.js it finds within that folder. So a lot of content within this video, but the important, con the important concepts here is we organize components through a general pattern of creating a components folder, creating a folder within that components folder, matching the name of the component we want to create. And then within that folder, we create an index.js file. And then that will be the code for that component. So again, we're following this as an influence of, and flowing out of that is, from React rule of components take care of themselves. Because in the future, and as we move into later videos, and we have CSS and media assets like images or even videos, all of them will be kept in the directory matching the name of that component. So we will have a folder for a component. It will have an index.js file. And in the future, it may even have CSS files and other files as well, all of which will be matched to that component because that component will be taking care of itself. So again, as we're managing components, creating a components folder, creating a folder for that named 
component inside of that, and then inside of that, creating an index.js file as we navigate managing components within React. 